What? New Solos product, Solos event scheduled for 25th May. Hmm. Dear Patrick, can I please, please be invited to the Solos launch event on the 25th of May, 2022? Please? Let's hope that I'm going to be invited to that event so that I can cover the event for you. Let's discuss a little bit and speculate to our heart's content on what that event could possibly be about. Okay, so towards the end of last year, I think it was in September of 2021, Sonos came out with the Sonos Beam Gen 2, which was capable of Atmos sound, enabling it to keep up with the larger brother in the lineup, the Sonos Arc, which was actually the first soundbar from Sonos that was capable of Dolby Atmos. But to me, that event was held to launch the second product of the financial year from 2021. In 2022, were there any product launches? Yeah, they came up with the Sonos Roam SL. But bear in mind that the Sonos Roam SL was available in China uh, many, many months ago. I think it was like uh, five months ago already towards the end of 2021. So it's technically not really a new product which they have announced recently. So that leaves space for the two product launches that Sonos has promised. To me, the Sonos Beam Gen 2 and the Sonos Roam SL aren't actually the new products that they have been talking about launching. Now, there are many, many speculations on the internet, on Reddit forums that I have been talking about what are the possible product launches. I've covered this to some extent in uh, previous videos, but today I'm going to summarize a little bit and of course to keep everybody up to date on what the possible product launches are going to be on the 25th of May, which is about the six weeks from now, thereabout. So because Sonos has been tight-lipped about this, I have not gotten any information from Sonos nor the local distributor and possibly we can really speculate and fascinate ourselves a little bit on what are the possible product launches. Now, I am going to list down four possible product launches. So the first that I am talking about will be the um, so-called the speculated Sonos S36. Now it's codenamed S36. We still don't know how it's going to be like. It could be a soundbar, it could be a speaker, it could be a subwoofer, the mini version, right? But to me, I think the S36 should be a speaker form, possibly a replacement for the Sonos Play 3, dubbed the Sonos 3, like how they went from Play 1 to the 1 and Play 5 to the 5. There is so far a missing piece in the whole puzzle, which is the Sonos Play 3 replacement, which I think they will be calling the Sonos 3 if they do launch it. The second will be the Sonos headphone that we have been hearing about for a very long time. And I think even up to a year ago, I pulled up some patent filing papers uh, that was available on the FCC and I started looking at what the Sonos headphone was likely to be. And it was fascinating, but haven't heard anything from them so far. And the third, which has been very, very rife, is the Sonos Mini Sub. I think uh, the software, the S2 software itself, it inevitably leaked out something saying that a small, a mini version of the sub is uh, cylindrical. And I don't know, it sent the internet wild wow for a while, thinking that the product was going to be launched. Now, bear in mind that the Sonos version for the software this year, the updates to 14.1, 14.2, and the 14.4, they somehow skipped 0.3, or maybe I missed that update. It has not introduced significant new features. It made some changes to the Sonos Roam battery handling to make it a little bit greener and how it handles during uh, um, charging when it's not being in use. Right? But otherwise, there weren't significant changes. Every time they launch a new product, they actually come out with a new version number. And I'm hoping that 15 comes around this time around. But I don't know. They have been kind of like, uh, you know, uh, messing with our brains a little bit when it comes to the release of the versions for 
the uh, S2 app. And the fourth one is something which is a little bit wilder. And I've covered this more than a year ago in my video, the top 10 wish list for Sonos. Uh, they implemented the dual sub, they implemented the heights adjustment channel, which I have stated in that video. And I have also, towards the end of the video, talked about a home theater setup. Now, Sonos has been trying to get into the home theater setup. Initially, they launched with the Sonos uh, Play 5, the original version, then they came out with the 1s, they came out with the 3s. No, they came out with the 3s, then they came out with the 1s. Then it's like um, they have been very focused on music. They started into the whole home theater platform with the Play Bar, followed by the Play Bass, then they launched the Beam, and finally the Arc. Right? And the play bar and the play base is now out of production. It's not available anymore. But the Sonos Beam actually had a refresh to enable itself to handle Dolby Atmos. But what was sorely missing was a central control system. Now, I'm thinking this, right? That if you have a central control system which enables the whole brains of home theater processing, right? Um, that is linked to your TV and it can cast any number of channels out to any number of Sonos independent speakers to put up a 5.1, a 3.1, a 7.1, or even a 7.1.2 or 7.1.4 if you so have that number of speakers around the house. And you just litter your whole house with Sonos ones, right? Each playing its own independent channel. And that could make for a very, very satisfied, a very flexible and versatile setup for your home theater setup. Now I'm gonna dive into a little bit more detail so you have time to stay around. Let's talk about that speaker, the S36, the elusive speaker. Now in the filing, I ran through all the, file, the whole FCC filing and uh, there were a couple of things that were important, a couple of things that are not so important. Some of them uh, really leads you down a path where, you know, it's probably bucking up the wrong tree, but one of the most important thing I spotted there was the fact that the speaker's orientation could be horizontal or vertical. Now, if you think about um, the speakers, right? The Sonos One is, of course, a vertical orientation. The Sonos Move uh, is also a vertical orientation. But the Sonos Five can be placed either horizontally or vertically, depending on um, your setup, your environment, whether you have enough footprint to actually pass that or not. So the Sonos Five, if laid horizontally, it casts a stereo, a wider image. When you put it vertically, is when you have a pair of them, and each of them will play its own left and right and you know technically you get a little bit of a, a vertical reach a vertical sound stage if that makes sense to you right um, and all the play bars all the play bass all the home theater products they are of course a horizontal uh, kind of orientation so the s36 it has a horizontal as well as a vertical placement which brings to mind the sonos uh, play tree right the play tree of the O. Wait, I'm going to pull out the play tree. Just give me a while. Okay, so this is the Sonos play tree. Um, it's a very, very old pair of speakers. I think it's already uh, 10 years into production, right? And there are rubber studs at the bottom. I have a pristine unit where all the rubber studs are still there. And they have a rubber stud at the um, kind of the, the, the smaller the side of it. So you can actually place the speaker horizontally or you can place the speaker vertically. Now, S36, Sonos S36 horizontal and vertical. So this looks like a proper replacement for the Sonos Play 3, doesn't it? So if you're going to be talking about vertical, I think Sonos will do well not to miss this opportunity to include a feature that um, a lot of people have been asking about, which is the uh, upward firing speaker for the rear. Now, if Sonos were able to, say, um, change this form factor a little bit, you know, there's a slight arc to it. Maybe make it a little bit uh, wider, okay, so it goes this way, such that you can actually fire some of the speaker cones upwards to create the Atmos channel for the real channel. So instead of a 0.2 for the upward channels, which is capable by the arc, you could actually add a 0.4 because the rear, if you have a Sonos 3, assuming they come up with that model, which will also fire the upward speakers, I think that will work very, very well. And if you place it in the horizontal position, then you could create a very wide stereo image, right? Much wider than what is currently suggested by the Sonos Play 3. So I think that is a possibility for the Sonos S36. 
Now, the second thing I'm going to be talking about, uh, I'll, I'll skip the headphone first, I'll come to this later, um, will be the Sonos Mini Sub. So that whole leak was actually baked into the S2 software itself. The S2 software, when it was setting up a sub, it actually made mention to whether you had a mini sub or not and how to identify a mini sub. Now, a mini sub in that pictorial representation, I'll see if I can pull up the image. Now, if so, I can put it up here. But um, it talks about a cylindrical shape subwoofer. Now, SVS is a company that popularized the cylindrical sub. So they had those huge three and a half, four feet, I think maybe even bigger uh, cylindrical uh, sub where they will position the cone at the bottom of the cylindrical cabinet and it will fire the base unit downwards to create a very even base throughout the whole house. Now, if it is a mini sub, I can't imagine it being uh, any bigger than this particular Sonos Sub Gen 3 that are sitting in the background here. So if it were to be any smaller, I would think that the cone is actually pretty small. Now, Sonos actually acquired this company called Math. I think M-A-Y-H-T, I don't know how to pronounce that. And the specialty of that company is to produce speakers that are very, very small and yet sound large, right? And they do it with um, that opposing, acoustically opposed speaker cones where they will fire two speakers in opposite direction. So it cancels out the vibration and it pushes twice as much air for every single note, every single stroke of the piston to drive those speakers. And it's able to do so into a much smaller enclosure. So I would think that uh, it is a possibility for the Sonos Sub Mini, except that the acquisition for the Mayeth um, company, the, the one that produced all these small speaker tech, it was actually quite recent. So I doubt that they would have made it in time. Now bear in mind that the S36 filing, uh, it, that there was some, um, non-disclosure involved, and that will expire sometime in July. So I would think that you possibly can't squeeze the tech from Mayeth into this new piece of technology within this couple of months since the acquisition. Maybe they've been working together for a much longer time. We actually really, really don't know. So the two possibilities, the Sonos Play 3 replacement, which is the Sonos 3, or the Sonos Mini Sub. We don't know yet, but it is still in line with what Patrick Spence mentioned last year, that they have promised uh, two product launches. And on top of that, they said that in the year of 2022, they're not going to be creating uh, new product categories. They are going to be focusing on their current lineup, which is why I think that the Sonos Play 3 replacement and the Mini Sub are possibly um, what they might be launching which is in line with what Patrick Spence has articulated over uh, to the public, right? And these are existing product lines made better. Now the Sonos headphone, and that is something that is completely new, right? They, they do want to make the headphones, I do believe, because the Sonos Move and the Sonos Roam, they are now portable and they are now out of the house. So if you wanted Sonos Sound out of the house, Previously, before the move, you couldn't do that, but you could now do that with the Sonos Move and the Sonos Roam in a much smaller um, packaging, which you can bring around and even throw in your backpack. And it weighs half a kg, so it's not very heavy, just, I think, about uh, just slightly over a pound each. But the Sonos headphone is on another level because it is a personal device. And I am actually very, very curious as to what how the Sonos sound signature is going to sound like, right? Where the bass is punchy, where the sound is actually much bigger than its size would imply. But there, I mean, there's so many great headphones out there. The Sony's, the Bose makes them, even this particular uh, Apple AirPods Max, they, they sound great. So I don't know how competitive Sonos is going to be, but when Sonos does things, you know that they do it well. And I do hope that the headphones pan out as well, but that would have been a new product category, which kind of uh, conflicts what Patrick Spence has been talking about to focus on the current product lines. And the last product that we're going to be talking about is this uh, unicorn. Well, unicorn is a wrong word because unicorn has been used to describe companies, uh, startups that has exceeded $1 billion in valuation. But unicorn as in uh, um, mythical, I, I don't know how do you want to say this, but Basically, it is something that is pretty far-fetched, which is the 
home theater receiver, right? It's like an AV receiver of sorts, which I've talked about. And when you talk about the AV receiver, um, a traditional AV receiver from Yamaha, Denon, Marantz, uh, you know, they, they do um, appear, come across as big and boxy. There are one or two knobs, one for volume, the other one for source selection. And they accept a lot of HDMI inputs. They output HDMI to your TV. And you are able to connect any number of speakers up to 11, 13, or dual sub or quadruple sub. It, 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 it is the brains of your home theater setup. And the number of speakers that you connect, you have to pull the cables because uh, the AVR, the AV receiver, actually has amps built in to drive those speakers. Now, if you think about what possible uh, hardware Sonos can come up with, this is what I'm dreaming about, right? And if you could just imagine, I'm just going to use a box to represent okay, whatever this box is, right? If you think about this box as a... Uh, the brains of the Sonos home theater system. And this is still in line with uh, Patrick Spence saying that they are going to focus on uh, existing product lines and home theater is really uh, one of two existing um, product categories that Sonos is looking at. One is uh, for music, speakers for music, and the other one is home theater, right? Uh, this is in line. You have a AV brain control center, right? Which accepts HDMI input from arc or e arc from your TV or from any other TV source. And it starts to then decode the surround channel, be it 5.1, 7.1, 7.1.4, 7.4, 7.2, whatever number, right? 11 channels, 13 channels, however number of channels. And you then connect your Sonos speakers, be it the Sonos Play 3s or the Sonos 1s or the Sonos 5s that you have, and you independently place them around the room. So you could possibly have three Sonos mice, one as the left, one as the center, and one as the right channel. And you could have another two uh, Sonos ones as the rear surround. And you could hook up another two or maybe even four Sonos ones overhead so that they can play the Atmos. And you hook up one or two Sonos sub to this particular Sonos AV receiver. And it controls and it decodes everything and it passes those sounds to individual speakers. I think that could make a very, very interesting product. And that is something that I would buy blind. Meaning to say, the moment they announce it, I don't care how it works, I'm just going to buy it and I'm just going to play with it. It is that compelling a product idea to me. I don't know if Sonos is going to do that because there's been no indication that they're going to do that. It kind of like a, it's, it's not a speaker system. It's like the Sonos M, it's like the Sonos Pod. It doesn't have a speaker on its own, but it acts as the control center, the brains of an AV setup. And if you had that, then you could buy any number of Sonos speakers. And wouldn't that do well for Sonos? I mean, uh, when you buy this one product, you're likely to buy at the very, very least another five speakers and possibly a sub for a 5.1 setup, right? It could get costly, but if you are really enthusiastic about it, if you have speakers spare, Sonos speakers lying around in the house already, I think that is something worth experimenting. And... For the longest time, we could not control the dialogue, the center channel of the Sonos Play Bar, the Sonos Play Bass, or the Sonos Beam, or the Sonos Arc. Uh, this could change things, right? Uh, you could say that the Sonos M did some of that because you could then connect two wired speakers to the Sonos M, and then you could connect the Sonos 1 and the Sonos, uh, or the Sonos Play 5s or the 5s to the surround. But um, it is still wired in a certain way and it is still send, it's, you're missing the center channel, right? So with this possible product, it changes the game, right? It puts Sonos squarely in the home theater space for a lot of enthusiasts out there. I had a full 7.1, no, in fact, I had a full 7.2.4 setup in my house in this exact room where I had cables, speaker cables snaking all over the room, all around the room, even into the ceiling, into the ceiling speakers. And it was messy. There were so many cables, nobody dared to touch the unit. So I've since gotten rid of that. I'm very happy with wireless audio now, right? The AA Phantom is sitting right behind me now. And they are wireless, only requires one power cord. 
Granted, it might be actually more difficult to run power cords than to run speaker cables, but you get the idea, right? Everything is then wireless, everything is controlled seamlessly from a potential uh, Sonos AVR. So that is my uh, blue sky idea. That's my uh, dream of what Sonos could possibly be coming up with and announcing on the 25th of May 2022. I have no better idea than you. I have not been told anything. And whatever I'm sharing with you are just my opinions, my thoughts, and possible chatter on Reddit, possible chatter on the internet. It is unsubstantiated. Nobody has confirmed anything. I guess we just all have to wait for the 25th of May before we hear what this is about. And even if I know anything beforehand, I'll be bound by some NDA and I can't reveal it to you. Uh, but trust me, I will be very, very excited. I will be sharing as much as I can, as fast as I can, as fast as I'm allowed to with you guys. So stay tuned to this channel. If you are not already subscribed to this channel and if you are a fan of Sonos or any wireless audiophile products, please do consider subscribing to this channel. Ring the notification bell so that you can be notified as soon as that video drops. Any questions, any speculations, please in the comment section below. Let's have a great robust discussion for the next six weeks before we know what the product is about. And I'll see you then. Well, I'll probably see you before then, but I want to see you on the 25th of May.